So thank you everyone for attending our latest webinar workshop. Um, our topic today is Technical Monitoring and SAP Solution Manager 7.2. Uh, we appreciate your presence here today, so let's get into our agenda. Uh, we're going to do a quick run through about us, and then I will hand it over to Donna Moladini, uh, Senior SAP ALM Architect with Core ALM for the rest of the presentation. Um, he's going to do a quick Solution Manager 7.2 overview, then move on to the main topic on technical monitoring. And then there's also going to be a live demo followed by a QA. Um, so, a little about us we are a dedicated team of experts focused on digital transformation lifecycle within the SAP ecosystem. And uh, we have a strong team of former SAP Solution Manager practice leads. Uh, we're a recognized leader with a proven track record to deliver ALM solutions, and we've also been driving a, the adoption of SAP Solution Manager. Um, so SAP Solution Manager provides a complete solution for your application lifecycle needs. Um, here are just some of the integrations at every step of your application development. And then here we have some of the services that we ourselves provide. Um, as you can see, we're pretty well-rounded in all aspects of managing your application lifecycle. Uh, we also provide HANA conversions and upgrades. And then here we have our awards and certifications. Uh, we are an SAP partner and an SAP certified in run SAP implementation. Um, so basically we run these webinar workshops to give back to the SAP community because that's really a part of our company culture. Um, as such, we make these workshops interactive with polls to get feedback and learn how we can make it better for future webinars. Um, our first poll is to understand how many of the participants, participants in this workshop uh, currently use SAP Solution, Solution Manager. Uh, we want to try and target the right crowd for our workshops. Um, also, if you have any questions, we'd really love to hear from you. Um, you can submit a question to the presenters by typing your questions in the questions pane at the control panel on the GoToWebinars interface. Um, if you don't see it, uh, look for the small orange arrow at the top right corner of your screen. Um, you can open the control panel if it's closed using the arrow icon. Um, you can, may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Uh, we'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Um, so I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds. Okay, and here are the results. Uh, we see that a good majority of you are currently deploying your new uh, solution manager capabilities. Um, that's pretty good. We're going to be talking a lot about that. You're going to get a lot of useful information from this uh, particular webinar. Um, so yeah, once again, thank you all for attending. And now I'm going to hand it over to today's presenter, Donic. Okay. Hi, Joseph. Thank you very much. Uh, can uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, we can hear you just fine. Okay. Um, looks like I'm not able to share my screen. Okay. There you go. Just give me one second here. And please let me know when you can uh, see my screen. I uh, can't see it just yet. Oh, there we go. Okay, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, uh, <clears throat> for joining today's webinar. So, uh, what we're going to focus today is talk about the technical monitoring uh, in uh, Solution Manager 7.2. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over a little bit of, about the new features in 7.2 Solution Manager, how things have changed uh, compared to the 7.1 version, <clears throat> and then we'll dive into the functionalities uh, from a technical monitoring perspective. So I'm um, not sure if you're aware uh, that Solution Manager uh, 7.2 version became available uh, uh, last year, and uh, if this is the first version that fully adopts SAP HANA. Uh, and it's the first release that re really leverages HANA and, and the advantages that HANA uh, brings in the SAP world. Um, and then the adoption of SAP HANA for Solman uh, follows the same uh, SAP HANA transition standards as for the other applications. So the good news here is that all the customers with a valid SAP maintenance agreement can use the SAP HANA as a database uh, for Solman. So there's no additional licensing costs that are required except 
um, you know, the, the additional hardware that will be a responsibility of the, of the customer, but at least the SAP HANA for solution manager usage uh, is, uh, is included in your maintenance. Um, and then um, the good thing is that this, uh, really, if you're a, an SAP or a HANA only shop, so uh, it, it helps you deploy a solution manager on that, on that application as well. And really the top reasons to go to is that pretty much all the customers, uh, SAP customers are moving uh, to HANA. Uh, it's also a good opportunity for a lot of customers to get introduced to the HANA database. So they do that by installing solution manager on, on it so the, the administrators and the team members can get exposure to it, training and, and, and whatnot uh, before going and deploying it in the, in the core applications. Uh, as we mentioned, the licensing is already in included, uh, the speeds uh, that you get, and then uh, there are other uh, benefits, especially when it comes to searching. Uh, so with regular solution manager uh, installation on a traditional database, uh, you would need to have a separate Trex instance uh, to enable or, or speed up and enable the searching capabilities. Uh, however, with HANA, the embedded search is used and leveraged. Therefore, there's no need to have a separate uh, Trex instance installed. So uh, if you have not upgraded yet, this is a roadmap that's uh, looking ahead. Uh, as you may be aware, is that uh, Solution Manager 7.1 uh, specifically the Java stack, the 702 Java systems, uh, the support, standard support will end at the end of 2017. However, that will impact Solution Manager as well as a whole since it's a dual stack system. Uh, and the Solution Manager 7.2 is the go-to uh, version now. Uh, so it's, it's definitely time to start upgrading if you haven't already done so uh, to, to upgrade to the latest and greatest version. Uh, so we do have, uh, we want to get a, get a feel for uh, what you have um, accomplished so far. So we do have another poll question. Uh, we're just trying to understand have you upgraded yet or not so we, we know which areas to focus on during today's presentation. Okay, it looks like we've got about uh, a split. Uh, almost half of you have already upgraded, so that's, that's, that's great news, but looks like there's quite a bit of work left to do out there. So yeah, if you have any questions regarding uh, the, uh, the upgrade process, because uh, 7.2, the upgrade to 7.2, technically it's not different compared to other instances, but from a functional perspective, there are a few more things involved uh, as far as the content activation and bringing the existing functionality uh, into the, the new version. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what's new with the uh, Solution Manager 7.2? For those of you that don't uh, have it deployed yet, haven't seen it yet, it's really the, uh, the, use, the user interface, besides some other functionalities which we will cover in, uh, in uh, the webinar, upcoming webinars uh, series that we have. Uh, so we'll talk about areas of biggest impact like change, manage, uh, uh, change management, the biggest area like documentation, uh, testing piece. Uh, but the biggest impact overall has been the new user interface. So SAP has really uh, created this unified uh, interface. It's really uh, to match all of the other SAP applications, the latest, in, uh, the latest versions. So uh, taking advantage of SAP UI5 or uh, UI5 interface, the Fiori Launchpad, and we'll take a look at those uh, here in a few uh, minutes. But really everything has been brought together to, to have the same look and feel as other SAP applications. And as we know, in the past there's been a big disconnect between different applications and the technology that they use in the back end. Um, and the benefit to that, one of the biggest benefits is that Pretty much all the functionality has moved to a web web-based uh, uh, model, so pretty much you can you can uh, consume all of the functionalities uh, via the, the the web browser, thus eliminating uh, needs for different versions of SAP GUI, and and it's much more universally accessible with different types of uh, browser technologies and versions that you might use. 
so one of the uh, one of the uh, things that has improved quite a bit is the embedded search or the, the search with track. So what it allows you to do now is really search across all social manager functionalities, whether you have tickets, you have incidents, you have documentation. Uh, so it allows you from a central location to go ahead and, and search for uh, whether it's file names, um, uh, actual keywords within the documents or tickets or change uh, requests. So really it's, it's all in all very uh, much more improved experience from an end user perspective. And if you've uh, spent some time uh, in the uh, service marketplace and you've seen the changes that SAP has introduced in the, in the service marketplace in terms of searching, so those same capabilities are available in Solution Manager or, or similar to that. So <clears throat> as we mentioned, so just like in the past, everything is role-based, so you can uh, control with security roles. You can control the accessibility of different tiles. Uh, but everything is launched from the launch pad, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And then from there, uh, you really have, the experience has unified. So it's not like you click on the screen and the whole experience is different depending on what solution manager application you're using. But everything is going to follow the same standard and look and feel exactly the same across the board. Therefore, uh, really helping you with uh, end user training uh, and, and deployment of the tool and adoption of the tool. Uh, the other um, thing is that almost completely uh, the flash-based applications have gone away. So that really was a, a painful thing in the past um, to try and, and, and uh, follow, you know, the standards, the minimum versions required, and deploying them across the organization. So now all of that has, has, been, uh, has been eliminated and improved. Now, uh, for the subject of today, uh, let's dive into a little bit deeper in the technical monitoring in Solution Manager 7.2. So in a, in a nutshell, the, the scope for application operation, the technical monitoring is really the system and application monitoring, uh, which includes the, uh, the system uh, health and monitoring, the user experience monitoring, integration monitoring, job, HANA, and uh, business intelligence monitoring. So what we mean is monitoring the systems really from top to down. So from starting with the uh, operating system, databases, uh, the application itself, uh, and, and looking inside the application and, and looking at how things are running from runtimes to function modules to errors, exceptions, and whatnot. Uh, then we have the root cause analysis and exception management. So uh, the first section as far as monitoring is the idea of proactively monitoring and making sure that you don't run into issues or at least you get enough warning uh, ahead of time to where you can address the issue uh, rather than something uh, uh, bad happening or, or to cause application unavailability. But should something happen, and you know, we cannot always avoid those situations, but if something does happen, then SAP provides a whole tool set around root cause analysis and exception management. So really, <clears throat> there are tools as far as uh, that help you uh, look at different traces, analyze traces, perform end-to-end -end, uh, trace analysis, get an in-depth information, look at the historical view of certain components, how they've been behaving, and all that is, is done and, and captured uh, in the BW, uh, BW uh, stack of the, of the solution manager uh, itself. And then uh, we have the technical analytics and dashboards. So those have been really integrated and embedded, and as you'll see during the demo, all of these uh, technical analytics and dashboards are, are really integrated with each application, each type of monitoring that you do. Now it's all available from one screen, so you don't have to launch special URLs just to get to the dashboards. And then technical administration guided procedures is really one another component that uh, helps you uh, operationalize the tool better and put standard uh, procedures uh, as to how to handle uh, certain incidents, how to uh, how to uh, operate the application so it doesn't you don't get to those uh, points where you have problems but if you do you can also guide and write uh, procedures to on, on how to handle certain uh, situations that do take place um, <clears throat> so the main idea as it's as it's been in the past so with 7.2 it's not any different as far as the infrastructure perspective is you have all the uh, managed systems across the bottom. So a managed system could be your ECC, BW, SRM, uh, cloud-based solutions, hybrid models, so all, all different sorts of solutions that would 
and act on a report to a solution manager. Now, solution manager, there are certain things that it can do. It collects data about the systems, and it uses that data for uh, monitoring capabilities on the left side. Uh, and we'll talk about how that is handled to where it collects the data. There are templates that SAP delivers. Uh, you apply those, that, those templates or those rules to the results, and, and then the system reacts by creating an alert on the right side. And you can create an alert, can create notifications. It allows you to create incidents, uh, forward them uh, to third-party tools. So all in all, it, it pretty much does data collection, analysis, and reaction to it as far as notifying you that something is, is wrong in the environment. So uh, over time, uh, the technical monitoring has gone through uh, several phases. And most of you probably will be familiar with the local CCMS. Uh, then was central CCMS, but now it has evolved into the end-to-end -end technical monitoring and alerting. Uh, and later on in the web, uh, one of the webinar series that we're going to uh, feature in the future, it's going to be related to business process monitoring, which adds yet another angle and flavor uh, into the monitoring, and, and that's uh, the integration really with technical monitoring and, and, and uh, how both of them give you a lot of benefit uh, as far as getting visibility into your operations. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the capability has increased quite a bit in terms of, of the types of systems that are supported. So you can see here, uh, you have the standard SAP uh, ABAP and Java applications, but now there are additional applications that are supported, uh, .NET, C, C++. There's all sorts of tools that are also supported that you can, uh, that you can monitor them. Uh, so the way the um, alerting thresholds are delivered are based on, on SAP sort of best practices, meaning that uh, templates are delivered that have uh, all the, uh, they're delivered by SAP, so with content update, every time you update the content, which is uh, an automatic uh, or can be an automatic task, uh, you'll get new things, uh, more refined thresholds, you get additional metrics. So all those are defined on standard SAP templates. And typically, uh, a customer will create a custom template uh, and then we'll give you more flexibility as far as uh, changing the thresholds, changing the metrics, uh, disabling, enabling metrics, creating your own custom metrics, and then controlling the way the notifications happen. So whether you, you have different support teams, whether you have uh, different handling mechanisms, uh, certain things you only want to be notified, or I mean, create an alert but don't notify anybody for certain metrics you want to be notified. So it gives you very granular control as far as what you want to do with those alerts. In addition to that, in these uh, customer templates uh, or custom templates, what you can do is there are some generic metrics. For example, monitor um, a log file. But typically, it's going to be uh, the wildcard search of those uh, log files. But it gives you the capability to an enter your own keywords, things that you specifically are interested in. So it gives you that type of, uh, that level of control uh, as far as what you want to alert on. Because typically when you turn everything on, you're going to end up with quite a few alerts uh, out of the box. But then as you go through the maturity uh, process, um, you will learn, you know, which areas you need to be fine-tuned. And we can all also help, help with that uh, process if need be. Uh, so, as we mentioned earlier, we do have the seamless integration between monitoring, alerting, and reporting. Uh, so, as, as we'll see today, it's, uh, it's, we've gone away, or SAP has gone away from the flash technology. Uh, everything is going to be in one page uh, as far as the, the, the web page from, uh, from a monitoring perspective. Uh, one technology is used. And then, really, there's no separation as there, is, as there used to be between the monitoring piece, the alerting piece, and the reporting. They're all visible in one page, just separated into different tabs of, within the application itself. And uh, here is an example of that. So in the, on the left side, we can see in 7 one things used to be uh, more displayed in compartments, whereas on the right side, we can see a grouping of different uh, of availability, performance, exceptions, capacity, et cetera. We can see all those in, uh, in, in one particular uh, screen. Now, the same holds true for all different areas of monitoring. So whether we're talking about system monitoring, HANA, uh, PI or PO monitoring, 
uh, service management, calendar, trace analysis, really all of these uh, applications do leverage the technology that uh, we've been uh, uh, talking about. So um, to give you a little bit of uh, insight into the uh, what the technical monitoring looks like, so we start on the top left side and we see here <clears throat> that we have the uh, the solution manager launch tab, which will give you access, access to, uh, in this case, we're looking at uh, user experience monitoring. But what you'll notice, and this will be the same across the board, that across the top, we will have the different uh, tabs. And this is as of SP4 and SP5, things have slightly changed. But in general, you'll see that uh, you have the different uh, tabs to navigate into different areas uh, or different to look at the, the functionality from a different angle. On the left side, we have a toolbar where we have uh, alerts, uh, the, uh, the link to the alert inbox, to the configuration, uh, to the help uh, documentation, or we can create incidents directly from here. On the right side, upper right side, what we'll see is uh, everywhere we're going to see a few icons here. The, the header items, which give you the scope. Uh, for example, if you want to change the number of systems you're looking at, uh, you can do one system, you can do five systems at the same time. You can change the timelines as far as how far back you want to go. Uh, certain applications you want to see, for example, how the performance has been over the last three months, and you can adjust that. Or you want to see, you know, what the performance is during this week. So <clears throat> it gives you control to, to do that. And then you can control the refresh rates. Uh, you can refresh any time you want to, or you can ref uh, control the refresh rate of that particular uh, screen, all from uh, from the header items look, uh, area. And then last but not least, on the far right side, you'll notice that uh, we have the expandable pain, uh, pain bar, which really helps you uh, get more information, uh, links to different, uh, different uh, help areas, for example, to explain what this screen means and, and what these tools are. And then you have the uh, personalization uh, a tab or a link in there where you can also create your own dashboard. So if you're not happy with uh, what uh, SAP has designed, the way they've laid out the, 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 the tiles on the dashboard, you can also create your own dashboard uh, within the framework that uh, SAP provides. They provide several of them so you can arrange them in a, in your, in a way that uh, suits you better. Uh, and here's an example of the customizable uh, and personalizable uh, run to be like a factory application. So in this case, uh, a dashboard was created called My Views, and then uh, you know the the, the tiles of the the uh, the applications inside of them. You can really drag and drop in whichever corner you would like them to, and that could become your uh, your default dashboard. Every time you log in, uh, you'll end up on that. Uh, on that dashboard. And a little bit more details uh, now about the uh, personalization, some of the details that you can, you know, really name them yourself. And then, as I mentioned, on the on the bottom of the screen here, you have different different views that SAP uh, delivers. And then by just dragging and dropping, you can uh, you can build your own dashboards. However, you're still confined to the uh, dashboards or apps that SAP delivers to you. Uh, there are some other uh, capabilities or offerings that SAP has, uh, which is called the Focus Solutions, uh, and that really uh, helps you expand uh, into the operation side from a technical monitoring perspective and, and gives you more flexibility. Uh, and on the build side, when you go into change management, so the, the Focus Solutions, uh, it's another extension of Solman that can really help you in, in some specific areas. Uh, and if you do have any questions, uh, you know, please let us know, and, and we can we can help you uh, navigate or, or go through, you know, figuring out the differences between standard and the focus solutions. Uh, from a system monitoring perspective, and uh, these screens will start looking very familiar to you. But uh, what you'll notice is that uh, you have an overview screen. Again, you can select what systems are displayed on the screen, but you can create your uh, your standard view uh, where it loads the systems. It could be production only, it could be all the systems in your environment. And what you're going to get is really the overall status, the availability, performance, configuration, exception, uh, categories for each system. Uh, and each of these um, have different templates, metrics, 
or data sets that they uh, base this rating on. So it's a very, very nice glance, a high level overview of all the, the systems in your environment. On the right side, you, if you choose to create alerts or, or generate uh, tickets or alerts, uh, you can um, you can see in the alert ticker the most frequent or the most recent uh, alerts that was that were raised uh, by the system. And as you uh, switch the view here, you you switch the, the the way you look at these systems, you can get a little bit more information about them. So it's the same system, it's just laid out slightly differently, which gives you a little bit more detail. Now it shows you what type of system it is, how many related. Uh, incidents you have or how many related alerts for that system and a quick overview of those categories that we talked about whether it's availability, performance, exceptions uh, and whatnot and just by hovering over specific uh, on each of these boxes by hovering over certain areas you're, you're going to get pop-ups just kind of a reminder just showing you you know what it is what type of system it is and then of course everything is clickable and you can uh, you can uh, dive into deeper. Uh, here's an example. After clicking on the system on the left side, we're going to see the hierarchical view of this application. It's going to show you really how it's made up or how it's built. In this case, it looks to be a um, distributed system. So you have database on one side. You might have a central instance or central services on one host, application servers on another. And then at the higher layer, you see the database instance, the database system. And then overall at the top, you see the entire uh, application. And then the corresponding uh, tree will be available on the right side where it gives you all of the details about each each uh, metric that's being collected. So we're going to take a look at it on, uh, during the live demo. Uh, good news about the HANA database replication monitoring. So we do have that capability as well uh, to where you can uh, monitor your uh, primary cluster, your secondary cluster, and your application scenarios. So there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, in terms of uh, monitoring those pieces. And as we move on, uh, we do have, in addition to the uh, technical monitoring from a traditional monitoring perspective, SAP is delivering the specialized monitoring area specifically for uh, PI integration or PO monitoring. So what it actually does, it <clears throat> it's connects to, your, to, the, to the PI and it really from SLD it's going to fetch all the data uh, about that PI uh, scenario that you have. It's going to give you an overview of all the components that are needed. And as we know, there are different proxies. There are SLD. Uh, there are the, the business systems and, and different components, you know, the mapping runtime, uh, integration repository, runtime uh, directory or repository. All those pieces are needed for PI to work. Therefore, uh, Solution Manager can keep an eye on all of them uh, to make sure that all the pieces are running in order for you for your PI to be considered uh, functional. Then on top of it, you do have communication channels. So what uh, PI monitoring will allow you to do is is really uh, take a look at. Uh, in this case, we're showing the components, but um, when we take a look at the channels now, what you're going to get is details about your communication channels that are configured in your system. And this data will be fetched automatically from Solution Manager. Uh, so you're going to see the status of each communication channel. It's going to give you the opportunity, if need be, to control those communication channels. So if you need to stop them and start them. Uh, and of course, as you click into the communication channel, you can go in and actually see the messages that are being processed. And if by scrolling up and down, you can really see the history of one communication channel over a specific amount of time. And you can, or, a period of time, you can see, uh, you know, what the, uh, the messages that have gone successfully, what's been rejected, and whatnot. In addition to that, to just you being able to look at them, you can apply monitoring templates to these, so you can start getting alerts on, uh, on, you know, when certain things go wrong, and you can you have full control over that. Uh, at the same time, we uh, we can also control all the messages and get a, a higher or deeper visibility. Into, um, into different uh, messages, how the messages are being uh, processed, how, and the status of each each message. So we typically see a large volume in here due to parallelization and whatnot, but nevertheless, you, this capability is available in Solution Manager. So now 
<clears throat> a lot of these things can be performed on the PIPO system themselves, but the problem is that um, there are two systems you have to log into, a couple of, uh, you know, maintain multiple passwords and whatnot. This way everything is centralized in one place and you can control uh, everything from one place and, and have visibility into the entire uh, environment. As we, as we switch gears here, uh, we're going to look at another angle from a monitoring perspective, um, but this really drives more into the business process monitoring, but it's kind of a gray area in between the two. So you have interface and connection monitoring. So with interface and connection monitoring, we have the capability to set up different scenarios. So a scenario could be uh, a connection between your SRM or your CRM and your ECC. Uh, so you could monitor that scenario. It could be uh, multiple systems involved in a, in a scenario. Uh, you could have uh, you could have things coming from outside. Uh, you know whether it's uh, some tech software you, you, or you depend on cloud-based solutions uh, for your business process. So you can you can monitor uh, those connection points, and there's all sorts of different uh, things that or technologies that you can monitor, whether it's RFC whether it's URL pings, whether it's web service availability, performing certain checks against those web services, looking for return codes. Uh, you can monitor uh, file systems, meaning your interface file systems. Uh, as files are coming in, you can check for age of files. You can check for um, you know, specific keywords or patterns inside the files. So there's a, all sorts of flexibility here in how you build your, uh, your scenarios. Uh, when we look at the uh, topology of a couple of scenarios that we have here, it's really, you know, these are pretty simple scenarios, but at least you can get a visual representation of each scenario, uh, which is built automatically, uh, meaning you define the connection points and define the systems uh, and all of the thresholds about them, and then the tool will build this diagram automatically for you. So as you make adjustments, as you, you change connection points, and whatnot, this uh, representation will be uh, updated accordingly. Now, um, looking at the interface channels, as, as we mentioned, there's all different things we can do, um, you know, all data requests, uh, web service, HTTP requests, file adapters, whether there's all sorts of technologies that we can monitor. And as we mentioned earlier, is that we have the monitoring piece, but now on the same screen we have the analytics piece, which gives you, uh, you know, the, the availability or the response time, uh, you know, across a specific amount of time, so or over a specific period. Uh, so it's very nice to be able to just uh, switch uh, just by clicking on the tab uh, to be able to switch between these screens. And then we can look at the performance for different web services, and we can dive into this. Now, the good thing is that everything is based on scenarios. so. Uh, you can lump everything, all the monitoring into one scenario and it'll become just one big uh, diagram with a bunch of lines pointing all over the place. Or you can separate them in, in logical groupings uh, or, or scenarios where you can, uh, you can control access where different teams would get access to different uh, scenarios so not everybody you know, can see everything if you don't want them to. So it's really nice to have that control and, and there's a lot of flexibility around that. Uh, another aspect of technical monitoring is <clears throat> really the user experience monitoring or what uh, used to be known as end user experience monitoring in the past. But what it really is, uh, there are robots or agents that can perform specific tasks. And what we do have and what we mean by tasks is we could uh, record a, a specific uh, scripts or specific steps performed in an SAP system, whether it's HTTP-based or SAP GUI-based, those can be recorded on a script, and then the script can be deployed onto a robot. And robots can be in all different locations. And what they would do is just replay those steps that uh, were recorded. The benefit to having this tool is that you can, um, you can have robots across the globe if you're a global organization. And what it will do is it will play those steps from that specific location and report back to solution managers. So as we will see here in a minute, uh, what we're going to get is we're going to get a view of different scripts. So on the, on the uh, 
bottom side of the screen here, we're seeing the different scripts that we have. Uh, right in the middle of the screen, we have the locations that we have these scripts uh, deployed. And then, uh, as in the past, you know, across the top, you'll get a quick overview of, of each component. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll go into these and take a look at uh, the, the SLAs, and we'll go into more detail, and, and I'll show this during the live demo as well. But we can see, you know, availability, performance of specific uh, uh, locations or how they uh, how they're performing. And last but not least, we'll switch gears to the job monitoring. So the big picture, uh, the idea here is that uh, all the systems will be connected to Solution Manager for for other reasons, for for your maintenance plan or for your upgrade. They have to be connected to Solution Manager. Uh, so now what we can do is deploy the job monitoring. Uh, uh, on Solution Manager, meaning that you, we can monitor specific jobs uh, on our managed system, so ERP, CRM, BW, uh, data services, uh, Bob J jobs, there's all sorts of things that we can do. The good thing here is that we can do simple monitoring, like on-off, or it ran, did it run successfully, or did it fail? But you can also build very complex uh, scenarios to where uh, you can set up the chains, uh, for example, for BW. You can do process chains, process chain steps. You can set rules if this then that, meaning if this job uh, is delayed, I know what the impact is going to be, so I need to be notified. Or if the job didn't start at a specific time, or it's running longer than expected. So there's all sorts of things that you can do uh, to, to get notified. So you can get very, uh, very fancy uh, with that uh, type of monitoring in terms of jobs. Uh, now there's a very tight integration with solution documentation, uh, with with branches. You can monitor jobs uh, based on your business process uh, hierarchy. So and different versioning. So it's really uh, ties uh, very uh, or there's a very tight integration with that as well. Uh, you can also uh, monitor jobs in your third party uh, tool like uh, the Redwood CPS, for example. If you have the jobs. Uh, and if you don't have any alerting set up on on, uh, on Redwood, you could monitor them from Solution Manager as there is an integration point there. And uh, last but not least is the uh, time, zone, time zone support. Um, so you can really, uh, if you're a global organization with multiple instances, you can you can have Solution Manager uh, adjust to that. And then, the, as we mentioned, the, the the interface has been simplified quite a bit. All right. <clears throat> now with uh, we're going to switch gears and we're going to go into the uh, technical monitoring uh, demo. And as we can see here, uh, I'm logged into the uh, into the launchpad, the Fiori launchpad. So based on our rules that uh, or the technical uh, authorizations that we have or the authorization that this user has, we're going to see different tiles. In this case, it's very busy because as an administrator, pretty much we've given ourselves every uh, functionality there is in Solution Manager. But you have the drop-down menu, you have the tiles that you can access different applications. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and click into the system and application monitoring. And we're going to get an overview of uh, all the different capabilities uh, that are available here. Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've clicked on them and launched them. But the first thing we're going to take a look at here is the system monitoring. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, what we'll see on the left here is the, uh, the two different overviews of the systems, and we're going to switch between those views. Uh, we do have uh, the status of each system. So uh, in our case, pretty much everything is going to be critical because we've turned on every uh, metric there is. Uh, so obviously, we're going to fail somewhere, <laughs> and these are just demo systems. but. It, uh, you, you can see at a high level, you can see the overall status, availability, performance, config, exception, et cetera. Uh, and as we mentioned on the right side, uh, we have the, uh, the alert ticker. And obviously, everything uh, we can uh, click on and look at them. And then from here on out, we can uh, navigate to the alert detail, give us a little bit more information as to what it is. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's launching. It's going to tell, tell us what it is, the number of uh, uh, failures, and then from here we can create all sorts of things. We can create incident, create a notification if one didn't already exist. Uh, we can see the rating over time and dive into more uh, more details. But looking at this view, uh, we're going to switch 
to the more in-depth view. And what we're going to see here that is that we have several systems, one of being uh, 872, an ABAP system, a Java, HANA database, uh, more Java systems. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on 872 uh, to take a look. And this is a HANA-based uh, system. And actually, it's the system that I'm doing the demo on. So what we're going to see is that uh, this system runs on a host named HANA. It has a central services. Uh, it has the central instance or, or, or the DAS domain instance. It has the database uh, instance and then the database, uh, uh, the database itself, the HANA database. And then uh, the H72 system, which is an ABAP system, it kind of gives you uh, an overview of how the system is made up. So if we were to add an app server, install the app server, and then go in and configure that app server in Solution Manager, uh, this uh, view would be uh, updated automatically. And as you can see, the page is about to refresh because we've reached that uh, point. So it will just flicker here in a couple of seconds uh, and then reload the latest monitoring data. Okay. Uh, now, if we know, so what we'll see is on each box on the upper right-hand corner, we'll see the number of alerts that are raised for that specific area. But let's say that we want to see the ABAP system as in, as ge in general, how it's doing. So once you click on it on the right side, you'll see the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the tree view of, of all these uh, different components. So as we keep diving in, uh, we're going to see uh, more and more details about the system. Uh, we're going to see uh, details and things that are being, uh, currently being monitored. So from availability perspective, from performance perspective, uh, we're going to see uh, everything that's being measured and, and, and monitored on. So a bunch of things are, are gray, have not been uh, turned on. But if we dive deep enough uh, in, in a specific area, we're going to start seeing the graph once we get uh, to, the, uh, to the last piece of the child node. So there are some metrics missing here, but at least you can see the uh, the status of each each piece, you know, from from uh, bottom from top to bottom here. So, uh, from a, a technical monitoring perspective, as we mentioned, there are links, configuration. We can add tabs on this side. Now, switching gears a little bit uh, into interface monitoring, as we mentioned before, uh, we do have. Uh, I'm waiting for it to load. So yeah. <clears throat> so what we do have is we have a. a the, the scenarios, as I mentioned, in this case, we have just one scenario called interface monitoring. But upon clicking on it, what we're going to do is we're going to launch that uh, topography. And in this case, we can see that really you can connect, uh, you know, from the system, you can uh, different types of technology that you can monitor, which is file adapter based uh, or file based. You can monitor HTTP connections, RFCs, uh, web services, IDOCs. Uh, cloud-based solutions, um, so if you're in a hybrid environment, a uh, solution manager will also be able to manage and monitor uh, cloud-based solutions as well as on-premise or the hybrid scenarios. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, when you switch the view here, you're going to get uh, different uh, historical data, if we have any data, uh, but uh, you'll, you'll see different graphs as far as how each uh, area of the application has performed over time. And most of the lines are pretty flat because we don't have much going on in our demo environment. But nevertheless, you'll see uh, the data that's uh, been collected. Okay, switching gears, uh, we'll go back to the user experience monitoring. Uh, this is the area where I mentioned. So what we do have here is we have three different scripts, uh, and these three different scripts are deployed in different uh, geographical locations. So we have North America, we have Europe. In the second level, we have countries. Uh, and really, you can set up the depth, you know, if you want a region. could be, you know, states, uh, just regions, you know, south, east, west, north, and then whatnot. The city, all these are free text fields that we can fill in. Um, so what we're saying in this case is that we have these three scripts running across different geographical locations, especially the HTTP script uh, runs on different hosts. Uh, or, or different geographical locations. So what we're going to do is take a look at what that actually means. So I'm going to open up these two, the basis and the HTTP script. And what we're going to see here, uh, we have recorded a number of steps. 
things like logging on to SAP via the GUI uh, and going through a certain transaction, like SM50, 21, or 3, and whatnot, just see the transactions that we navigated through. And now what we've done is we've recorded that and hit the replay button. And what we can see is from this location uh, how these steps are executed. So if we can see the logon procedure takes the longest. Uh, and then we have other things like SM21 was faster than SM50. And then we can set thresholds. And we can see here that the threshold is when it reaches this point, it's going to be yellow. Once it reaches here, it's going to be red. Uh, so we can uh, kind of see you know how the how those steps are being executed. Now, let's say we get uh, an alert or a prompt that there is a problem with one of the applications. So we have an HTTP script uh, that we have a problem with. And once we expand, we can see what that script is actually doing. And in this case, it's just logging on <clears throat> to a Java session that we were administrator, and it's running a bunch of steps. Well, just by looking at this, I can tell right away that almost everything seems fine except the log on. Uh, the logon page is taking the longest, uh, or the logon procedure is taking the longest. Now, this automatically could, could tell me that, okay, do I have LDAP integration? Is the integration to LDAP not working as fast? But in general, I can see that the application is working uh, pretty nicely here. Now, uh, you could see that, for example, uh, the same script from one location runs fine versus another location does not run okay. It immediately kind of helps you isolate and say, okay, so this problem is isolated to a geographical location rather than being an application issue. So it helps you uh, kind of get that higher level visibility. And if there are any um, any doubts or you need to get any more in-depth information, what we can always do is right-click and run the scenario with a trace, which is then uploaded in the root cause analysis section and helps you break down every hop, every step from the network to application perspective to to really uh, get uh, a deeper look into these. Uh, now, I'm not going to click through all the tabs because it looks like we might be running short on time, but um, I want to make sure we leave some time for Q&A. Uh, but what we have here is an overview of different angles that we looked, uh, we looked at this. So, for example, on the top right or top left corner of this quadrant of the screen, we can see different scripts and their uh, run times. On the top right quadrant, we can see different robots that we have deployed that are running those scripts. So it kind of gives you, you know, two different ways of looking at it. And then it shows us the performance over time of these specific uh, robots and, and scripts that we have deployed. So the self-check script, it's always here at the bottom. It, it just does a quick ping. And usually it's, it's the one that performs the best. However, we see the rest uh, over time. We see that uh, things are not, uh, you know, hasn't been performing as well or, or, or whatnot. And then on the bottom right uh, quadrant, we can see the status or meaning, uh, you know, the uh, kind of like the SLA, the availability. And we can see all those things, uh, you know, how much, what percentage of time this particular application was not uh, available. Uh, and then as we click into these, we're going to get, you know, those details and, and just from a different view. So uh, what I want to do now, uh, I, that will conclude uh, the presentation uh, uh, portion and the demo portion. Uh, and what we, you know, we tried to cover as much as we could here in, in, the, in the one hour, but this is a very big topic and there are a lot of things. So, uh, and, and, you know, there are other areas in Solution Manager. So what we'd like to find out is if you could uh, spend a minute here, just uh, we try to understand if, if you would like to see a demo or more personalized demo, whether it's the technical monitoring, maybe we didn't go far enough. Um, and if you're interested in us, contact and you let us know. And uh, we will, uh, you know, we will see how we can uh, help you and, and then guide you and, and just show you some of these uh, tools. Uh, the way they're being used or can be used. And with that said, uh, Vyosa, and as soon as the uh, we close the poll, uh, I'm at the Q&A uh, uh, slide, and if you want to just give us a direction on how to, to get the questions through and let me know if there's any questions.
Okay. So um, <clears throat> if you do have any questions, please, uh, there's a question and answer uh, pane. Uh, I believe that you, you'll have the option to uh, type in your questions, and we'll, uh, we've got a few minutes here, and we'll try to answer all your questions. Uh, if not, then uh, we'll be able to uh, follow up with you and, uh, and address all the, the open questions that you have. Uh, so, uh, Yosa, Ivan, do we have any questions at this time? And if you are speaking, we cannot hear you, or at least I cannot hear you. Hi, Donny, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, we do have some questions from uh, our participants. Uh, so the first question we have here is from Curtin. Um, Solution Manager 7.2 on HANA on-premise works on Linux operating system only? Uh, at this point, yes. Uh, so you just have to check uh, the, so the Solution Manager, you know, for other databases, uh, traditional database, yes, it'll, it'll run on any, uh, you know, supported OS, the tr traditional Unix, Linux, uh, Windows combinations. Uh, HANA itself is, uh, you know, it's going through certification, so you just check the product availability matrix. However, you can still run Solution Manager on a separate instance, but run only the database on the Linux host, but the application itself could still run on Windows. So uh, you have that capability. But yeah, I would rely on uh, product availability matrix to check for the HANA and the latest information is published there. Hopefully that uh, answers your question. All right, thanks, Donny. Uh, I have another question here from Sharada. If we just use testing functionality and project administration with solution documentation, and during upgrade, if we don't install tracks in traditional database, will these functionalities stop working? Okay, so from what I understood, is currently you have documentation, you have testing, and you have uh, project administration. Um, Solution Manager will function. Uh, specific items within the documentation will not work. Things like if you're building end-to-end -end scenarios, you need to search for items in your library, whether it's a transaction code or a document. So when you put them together, you will need the searching uh, functionality for that. Uh, testing, there are certain things that you're going to be searching for if you have test cases. So those are the type of functionalities that will not work. Now, in, ge in general, the automation, all those pieces will continue to work, but anytime you need to use the search functionality as you're putting new processes together, uh, that's will uh, the searching will be needed. Okay, hope that answers your question. There's a follow-up. Also, um, even though we were on 7.1 service pack 14 for a long time, we used to only use CCMS alerts and not technical monitoring, will the old CCMS functionality still work in 7.2 the way it used in 7.1? Uh, for the most part, yeah, everything's been uh, transitioned into NetWeaver 7.4 uh, from 7.02. Uh, some things might have gone away. I know that certain things have been added, uh, so I'm not as sure 100% exactly which areas will not work, but I know that uh, CCMS framework is still there. Uh, it still can be leveraged. It works like it worked in the past, but you know I'm just not sure exactly which metrics have gone away, uh, and you know what else has been added. For the most part, everything is there. Okay. Still there. Answers the question, Sharda. Uh, I have a question from Todd. Uh, if we are on 7.1 and have technical monitoring configured now, uh, we are upgrading. Will we need to do the managed system config again after the upgrade? Uh, seems like so many people are doing greenfield. There's not a lot of information and post upgrade activities. Yeah, uh, yeah, very good question. So uh, <clears throat> you have to. Uh, well, it depends how old your STPI API or the plugins are. Uh, those those will always be flagged. It <laughs> seems like, uh, but uh, when you go when you uh, do this, uh, the upgrade, only specific tasks within the managed system configuration have to be executed, not everything. 
Uh, so things like uh, rerunning, uh, recreating the extractors, I believe it's step eight or nine, uh, or step eight on an ABAP system. Uh, so you have to re, uh, regenerate your extractors. There are things like from a VW activation perspective, user roles have to be regenerated, or some of them, not all of them. Uh, so there will be uh, activities in the managed system config, but not everything has to be re-executed. Uh, so there are going to be specific areas that you have to uh, re-execute. But it's nice because they're all flagged. It'll flag you and let you know which area needs attention. So that's very, very useful. Hopefully that good. helps out. Uh, I have another question from Yuxol. How can we differentiate test systems and production systems on this dashboard? Um, can we create two different tabs for the test and our production systems? Uh, the tabs you could not. There's there's a couple of ways. So uh, you could uh, when you so the, depends how you launch the monitoring. But when you launch the monitoring, typically, I mentioned on the upper right hand side you have the looks like what looks like a target. Uh, that's going to be your scope selection. So on the scope selection, you can list all the systems, but then based on your LMDB classification, you can uh, pick on, filter only production, for example. You highlight production and hit OK, and only production systems will show up. So you can uh, isolate dev QA prod, but those will be on different uh, browser tabs, if you will, or on different browsers. Uh, not different tabs within the same monitoring application, if that makes sense. So even if you create a custom tab, it'll be more the uh, specific data for the selected system. So there is some flexibility. And if you need any help or have any questions, you know, drop us a line and uh, we can uh, see how we can help you. Okay, here's, we have another question from Krishna. If we are planning an upgrade slash new install to get to 7.2, would you recommend setting up technical monitoring while we're still on 7.1 or wait till we're on 7.2? Uh, you know, technical monitoring has not changed uh, tremendously from a infrastructure perspective. And technical perspective is really depends on, the, on your timing. Um, just the UI, the front end has changed. If I had a choice, I would wait and do it all in 7.2 uh, because you, you're going to do it once and be done with it versus uh, things that you have, that I just mentioned a couple of questions ago that you have to rerun some of the steps. Or so some uh, rework would be required. But it just really depends on, on, on your timing. OK. This is going to be the last question because we're coming to the top of the hour. Uh, I see that we still have uh, several questions that we need to follow up. Uh, don't worry, we will follow up with you after the webinar um, in offline. So last question from Nilesh would be, for Java systems, we don't receive alerts on node issues restarts. Oh, sorry, node issues slash restarts. How can we get in Soulman 7.2? OK, I'm not sure. Uh, so. Could you repeat the question? There are no alerts being generated for the when the nodes are restarted? Yeah, uh, Nilesh, if you're still around, uh, could you uh, retype your question again? But for what you typed before, it's uh, for Java systems, we don't receive alerts on node issues or restarts. How can we get them in Solution Manager 7.2? Okay. Well, I mean, the system has to be configured. You know, obviously, the template has to be uh, assigned alerts have to be configured to be generated. Make sure the metric for that specific area for availability is, is enabled. Uh, and then, you know, work modes have to be checked because it could, the system could be put, you know, mistakenly in, in maintenance mode. Therefore, you know, it never alerts. It just depends how far you've gone with configuration, but obviously the end-to-end -end monitoring has to be set up uh, for it to generate. So there's multiple areas that might not be functioning here, so hopefully okay. that uh, helps. Yeah, we pulled it up, but uh, we do have, uh, he has a bunch of questions, so we just follow up offline. Um, we ran out of time, so thank you, Donic, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Uh, as Donic mentioned earlier, this is the first in a series of webinars that we'll be hosting, discussing topics regarding SAP Solution Manager 7.2. 
you can view our next webinar at coriam slash webinars. Um, we really appreciate your presence. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. You also receive an follow-up email shortly with a link to view of today's webinar. So we received a lot of questions today. And um, if you need Coriam assistance with your solution manager project, um, you can use the poll right now that's up to um, to just flag yourself so we can follow up with you after the, the webinar. On behalf of everyone here at Coriam and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much.